All right, I am going to go ahead and start recording on the screen capture, and you can go live, Rob. We There we go. All right, e All right, hey, thank you, Rob. Good evening, everybody. This is Clyde and Robert from Pixel Pro Displays. We have our normal Tuesday uh, get-together tonight, and one of the things that we'll talk about tonight for our get-together is not just, it's not an open mic night, it's actually a webinar night. And so what we wanted to discuss is, this kind of was a topic that Rob brought up to me, and I thought it was a great idea. Um, so uh, just know that uh, anytime you guys have questions, anytime that you have uh, challenges or issues in x -Lights, Putting comments in, like you're watching, you're watching live on uh, Facebook now. Uh, if you see the videos on YouTube, if you have questions about things, put those questions in the comment section uh, or send an email to us. The reason uh, that we that we ask you to do this isn't because we want to see all of you know. We I don't. It, it's nice to hear. Hey, you, this is a great video, but but what we want to hear is where you guys struggle and what information it is that you need to hear, so that it makes it easier for you to go through the hobby the way that we've been going through the hobby for the past well over uh, 12 years now or so so um, but our goal has always been to make it as easy as possible for you to jump in and start doing the hobby the holiday lighting hobby um, so with that I'm gonna go ahead and get started today's webinar is it's um, it's it's gonna seem basic uh, as, as far as uh, as far as the uh, context goes that the but the content uh, is gonna be a little bit different because there are some additions in X lights that um, have been incrementally added probably over the past two years and I don't think that many people have seen the demonstration of some of those additions but I want to just for a moment uh, create a brand new video if you are starting out with uh, X lights and one of the props that you're going to most likely want to add to your show is a tree or a matrix at some point and I, I would like this to be kind of I don't want to say an all-encompassing or everything you need to know but just the basics to understanding building your model in X lights that you're going to physically build in real life so um, we'll go ahead and get started with uh, options for the matrix and the mega tree we'll go ahead and start with the matrix so uh, we're in X lights we're in X lights uh, 2019 or I'm sorry this the December 29th version of 2023 uh, it's 23.23 .23. so uh, it was the last version of last year we haven't seen a new version just yet this year uh, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you right here at the top here if you hover over this kind of uh, square block here this says create new matrix and what this is is uh, X lights has these are all of these in the layout tab here are considered um, default X lights models or built-in X lights models and we'll go ahead and select click one time the matrix model and click and drag it out and the first thing that you're going to notice whenever whenever you look at the um, matrix model is is that it by default comes out and is presented as a horizontal in other words it's wider than it is taller and it appears to be horizontally laid out like a like a landscape snapshot that you would have taken uh, with your standard camera it's not like your cell phone if you take a phone uh, 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 take a picture with your cell phone straight up and down this would be considered like a portrait so th this would be this matrix is considered like a landscape so that's the default whenever you pull it in so just to run through some of the basics so you're aware of them X lights always creates the matrix model horizontally that's the basic setup of the model now you can come down here and you can give the matrix a name I usually just leave it the same and uh, you can give it a direction and horizontal that horizontal whenever you see it means what it says so horizontally these strands are going to run from left to right you could if you weren't going to run horizontal strands you could run vertical strands and to make that change you have to change that in the direction and if you do see what happens now X lights reorients this 
as a vertical matrix because it expects the matrix to be vertically aligned as opposed to horizontally aligned. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to switch that back to horizontal. And it all depends on how you're most likely going to wire the, the, the matrix panel. And so that is a rather important thing to think about ahead of time before you start pushing your model. Whenever you get it from, let's say, you order from Boscoyo Studios or Jackie or uh, um, Jason uh, at Gilbert, you order any of these models or any of these props, before you start pushing them, you probably want to build a matrix or a tree inside X lights first because as long as you know how to build it in X lights you want your model to match it identically and if it doesn't match the way that you pushed it then um, then it, it becomes a little bit more frustrating to deal with it so I, th I think it's always best to start with the model on X lights first especially if you're not familiar with how they're built and then when you see how they're built in X lights you can duplicate easily the same thing uh, using some of the tools that are built in X lights in order to help you push the prop correctly. So um, the next thing I want to show is that there are a, a couple options here. By default, there's a number of strings. And number of strings is literally consider it to be the number of times you're plugging in a string of pixels into the controller. Oop. There we go. The, so basically, basically what's happening is with every string that you have, uh, as far as uh, every single um, uh, string that is going to that matrix, that one string is considered an output. So always remember that. And, and in this example, XLights defaults to 16 strings, and generally that's because most, um, m most controllers that were uh, around back in the day when XLights was first created had a 16 output controller configuration. So it was common to do a 16 strand matrix. Now they defaulted to 50 pixels per output. Some of the older controllers could only do so many pixels. So they kind of limited. And of course, pixels are a little cheaper now. Uh, you can get uh, a lot more options built into your controllers now. You know, it's it's 12 years past whenever X lights had been written in this manner. 12 plus years, we'll say. Maybe it was 2011 or 10 that X lights was rewritten and um, in, in version 3. And what, what you see here is just the basics. So you can edit any one of these lines. Let's say you're going to have uh, 16 strings and instead of its 50 pixels, uh, maybe it's 100 pixels. So if you make that change, you can see, oh look, it got way more dense on the width and uh, you might end up having to stretch it out to make it a appear a little bit more natural or normal compared to the other props that are in your layout. So that's important uh, as far as viewability. I mean, it's still, X Lights will still uh, put, the, put the effects on it and, and, and render it as good as it can. But you have these options. Now, another thing too is if you are familiar with wiring your pixels uh, uh, wiring up your controllers and so forth. Uh, if you have eight outputs on a controller and they and they're served by one 350 watt power supply, you can beef up that number on the outputs from 100 to 200. So if you have four power supplies running, let's say a Falcon F16 V5 controller, a V4 controller, a V3 controller, you can put two power supplies in the in the uh, enclosure and have one power supply at 350 watt, and it can it can um, output the data to uh, one half of the bank, eight outputs, and then it, you can uh, have the other power supply run 350 watts out to the other half of the bank. So in our world, we only go with about 200 pixels per output per, um, per eight channels or eight outputs on the power supply, so about 1,600 pixels. So for us, we're most likely going to... Um, we're, we're most likely going to make this matrix, or if we were running this off of one controller with 16 outputs, two power supplies, we could do 200 pixels per output. And that seems like a like a bloody lot, but it it really is it, it really is going to be something really glorious whenever you're done. But here's the nice thing: is we can do something called fold. We can fold a string and have it wire have the wire run one way from here to this way, then go back up and then zigzag to the back and we call that a strand. So that's one output goes in, goes across, 
up and then back over. And the nice thing about doing this is that you get a little more height out of it. So what if you had 100 pixels going over, up, and then another 100 pixels coming back off of one string? Well, what you would do is you would align that with the strands and call that two strands per each one. So now, instead of 16 outputs, well, you have 16 outputs, but instead of having 16 lines, you now have 32 lines because each string, each output now goes over, up, and back and it does that one zigzag. And if we, we, we can also utilize some of the other functions in XLights by hovering over top of the prop whenever it's selected, like I'm not selected, now I have it selected, right click, and we can look at this thing called the wiring view. Now, I can only make this so big because there's a lot of pixels in it, but this shows you how to wire it. And I, I'll get a little bit, I'll, I'll kind of thin it out a little bit in a moment, but you could also say that those strings per strand instead of two so you go over one up and then back one that's that's two strands off of one output or one string what if you did four and that changes that number from 200 pixels in the output and one at 100 on this line and one on 100 at this line you could do four out a uh, four uh, strings or four strands at 50 pixels you could change this to four and now you get this really it's it's much less wide and a little bit more tall it becomes a little more squared off now and if we go in here we can look at the wiring view and uh, maybe maybe this will show up it won't there's just too many there's just too many pixels in there but that's okay that's okay that's okay you get the idea. The idea is, and I'll break this down a little bit uh, uh, to, to make this a little bit more simple. I'm going to go back to one. I'm going to put uh, 50 strings on here, or 50 pixels on each strand, and I'm going to go to two strings. So this will help clarify exactly what I'm talking about, and you can physically see it. If we have 50 strings on an output, and there's two outputs, and we fold the string back, we go over and then come back one. Now we we have these this option to go with four uh, lines and it's actually two strings two outputs but it's four strands because you can see they're folded in half now if I go in here select it re uh, view the wiring diagram you can see here exactly what X lights is doing it's saying hey where's my first pixel this is string one node number one string number one node number two number three number four number five so it starts at the top and we're looking at notice the reverse view on this so you're always looking from behind when you look at the wiring view so you'd be looking at the top right here and it goes across 25 pixels then it comes down and goes back the other 25 which equals your 50 and then your second output would be 1 through 25 from from uh, in the reverse view from the right to the left and then down one more and over to the right so you can build your matrix however you need to and that's why it's important to look at this other option right below here which is your starting location so it's important to know where are you going to start your matrix where's the first pixel going to be and this is basically what X lights is asking you when you build your model where are you putting it so this is one thing I, I usually go with bottom left or bottom right because I end up going from the bottom and zigzagging my way up to the top and adding more strings and I usually I'm usually I would say I'm usually on the bottom left you can do it however it makes sense for you there's no wrong way to do it just know that we just moved the bottom to the bottom of the left if we do the wiring view now you'll see that instead of um, instead of the top on this side over here being the first pixel now you see down below that the bottom from the reverse this is the back side of it you're pushing the pixel in from the bottom right which is actually whenever you turn it around the bottom left so this is how the matrix model is built and this is how it's kind of set up but here are the new things that have been added much more recently uh, the first one I'm going to show you is don't zigzag now why would you need this don't zigzag well I kind of, I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse let's go ahead and check the option where it says don't zigzag now remember I, I I've said since the beginning that you are going from one side you're starting at the bottom uh, left in this instance going over up and then back you're doing this this wrap around and that makes it easier to wire but some people have pre-made 
uh, matrix panels and they've done it differently for other situations this don't zigzag might be something helpful for them because they've already wired it a certain way which is why this option was added in so if we come in here and we go and look at the wiring view you'll see that what X lights did was instead of and now I need to go find my annotation here uh, instead of uh, here's your first pixel here and here's your pixel number 25 over here and then connecting up to here and this being 26 you can see that X lights has added this um, additional line this wiring line to go from here's pixel number one to pixel number 25 and then pixel 26 now has been reverted over to here so it adds this yellow line this 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 line between the two to show that hey if you wired it this way this is the way x lights is going to send the data over for you now does this apply to, to many people now who are building a brand new matrix i don't recommend that you use this where this is really helpful is for people who have built matrix panels in other software and are bringing it into x lights and need a way to build it that natively they wouldn't have done it that or that way originally but um but they have it anyway and they still want to be able to use it x lights can do that without having to to use a custom model which is what we used to have to use um, previous to this option being added so that's one nice addition uh, while it's not really relevant to to a lot of people it's helpful to to a, uh, a number of people as they get used to using x lights and they bring it in um, so the other thing is the alternate nodes now um, for years, nobody could understand why people would do certain things. Uh, again, the alternate nodes has been added because for whatever reason, people uh, thought that it was a good idea to, um, to create a model where they leapfrogged their pixel pushing up one side and back down the other so that they would always return back to the side where they started from and one of the reasons that they might have did this was the older controllers needed power injection and to have something let's say at the top of a vertical matrix or uh, having having it end here at this side here it made it a little harder to do power injection so it made sense that if you started on this end here and you leapfrogged back then then you could power inject only on one side. You wouldn't have to run cables all the way down to the other side. And again, this is a, an example of a matrix. This isn't what somebody might do, but this is an example to show you so that I can show you as far as the wiring goes, and you can see this. So if we do hit this alternate wiring node or this alternate node, if we right click and we look at the node, the wiring view uh, and extend it out, what you're going to notice is this is pixel number one here. Uh, pixel number one is right here, but pixel number two is not right there. Actually, pixel number two is right here. And then pixel number three is here, four is here, and we're skipping every other pixel. So in other words, what's happening is this person is building his model so that, hey, this, this is an output here and then uh, this is an output here but they can power inject and they could probably get rid of this and they could do this all off of one we'll say and maybe they're doing maybe they're using five volt pixels and that's what they need to do in order to get the um, to get the pixel ends close enough together so that they can power inject them much more um, uh, efficiently so this is this is a definitely maybe not the way you would build your model today but for the folks who have already built something maybe in let's say in Lightorama that the, it is definitely the option that they are able to use exactly what they have without creating a custom model and um, going into uh, going into the custom model and building it so that it works with a custom model they can use the native X lights model which there are a number of benefits and advantages to that so that is that that that's one of the nice things I will say about the the matrix panel uh, is the 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 functions and the updates that have been added to it definitely super helpful um, I could I could go into detail again with doing a vertical version but uh, you're about to see the vertical version and in, in of the matrix but it's only instead of it being a, a matrix it's actually going to be a mega tree and uh, that's the difference kind of between the tree in the matrix the the tree by default as as you see I've selected it there I've clicked on it one time and you click and drag 
the tree is built as a vertical model and it had always been only a vertical model so we'll go through the basics of just building a mega tree in x lights just incidentally if you buy any mini trees not every mini tree because there there are some coro mini trees out there now that um that have their own models because they're very special mini trees but um suffice to say a standard mini tree with a standard mini tree star on the top of it most likely if you're going to build a mini tree you'll also use this mega tree as your model and you just define it with one strand or two strands if you need to and uh, it's two separate models because you're using the star model also uh, i've done a number of those uh videos on on that specific uh instance that you would use those in and you're welcome to watch those i'll link those whenever i upload this video to youtube you can look up there at the link um so when we when we look at doing the uh, the mega tree model the basic mega tree model is exactly like or set up as the matrix panel was initially it was a 16 by 50 and x lights does the exact same thing for the mega tree the difference though is is that in x lights the mega tree is automatically made were built at 360 degrees it's made for 3d uh, so we were all excited about that when 3d first came out we thought oh that's so cool um, but many people don't use a 3d mega tree or uh, uh, 360 degree where it goes the whole way around many of us only show the front side of the the tree to the people that watch the front of our show so you may be only uh running on your mega tree instead of 360 degrees maybe you're you're doing 220 so i'll go ahead or, or uh 260 we'll go to 260 here and then i'll go back into 3d and you can see uh what what a um let me get rid of that 3d grid there we go this is what it would look like is if it were a um a, a 3d model in your yard so it would have this it would have this appearance of not quite filled in in the back because you're not worried about the back being seen because uh you don't need you know maybe it's up against your house or uh it's tucked between your house and your neighbor's house which is how mine used to be and so i, I went back so far um another thing that you could do is instead of it being a 260 maybe it's a 180 exactly half so basically you see there it's a flat tree but it does come out it does have some depth to it so you can see that it comes out just like that so that's the nice thing about about the uh, tree the functions of the tree keep in mind though that there's two other models that you can utilize if you have a flat tree where it is strung from top down to the bottom this this kind of uh, gives it more of a uh, flat appearance and then there's also uh, the, and this predates uh, this predates today's discussion but many years ago we had something called a ribbon tree and uh, the ribbons on the tree were were uh, the further apart you 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 would use pixel strips and uh, the further apart they would be they would end up um, being let's say since this since this was out further this would end up lower and then the closer to the center and the more vertical the center string got the taller the center line got to the uh, on the me mega tree and so they called this a ribbon tree it was a very neat it, it still is a very neat looking tree so you can duplicate that in x lights if that's the kind of a tree that you do have and it's a very it's a very nice uh, 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 visually appealing thing to look at whenever you're uh, you have this in your show but it's an option there for the people that still have those what they used to call the ccr trees or the ribbon trees um, but we'll go back here to the round one. That's the one more commonly used, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of migrate into why we would use the round tree later on. Um, so th basically, we're going to skip a lot of the major detail to this uh, to the mega tree right here at the top, and we're going to go down to uh, where it says strand direction vertical. Now, 
this is one of the enhancements but just know that if we look at this tree we have 16 strings by 50 tall now when when we talk about matrices and mega trees i didn't say this at the beginning and i should have uh whenever you whenever you pose the size of your tree we usually pose it not in physical size meaning it's eight feet wide by 16 feet tall we generally will say my matrix is or my tree is this many pixels wide by this many pixels tall we always go by the width of the panel first excuse me then we go by the height of the of, of the of the panel and so in this instance we have 16 strings left to right or 16 uh, lines that go up and down and then we have 50 pixels in each uh, string that goes from the bottom to the top now generally the mega tree starts either at the bottom left or the bottom right because most people keep their controllers on the ground some people like to put their tree controller at the top of their tree because it keeps all of their strings up off the ground and they have far less issues with it uh, as far as water ingression the downside to putting your controller at the top is unfortunately if you have a problem and through the season you have to find a way to climb up to the top of your tree uh, and and go and and do your uh, fix or repair or whatever so that might be uh, it might be a, a blessing and it might be a curse so uh, but just know that you can change your start positions you can you can start at the top and you can start at the bottom you can start at the top left and you can start at the top right the bottom left or the bottom right any of those is exactly how the model is built or can be built in your instance so uh, you're not if you have something that you're bringing in from somewhere else that's the flexibility to continue doing it the way that you were doing it before because th those options are there now just like the matrix if uh, we can right click we can select it and we can look at the wiring view and per the wiring view this might be a little easier to read i'm not sure uh per the wiring view here and this is a 360, uh, 180 degrees. See how they're closer here together? It's, it gets a little harder to read them. But if you see there's one and then two, and then you have, what? oh wait, excuse me. This is one, this is two, this is three, four, five. And again, anytime you look at this, this is always from the reverse view. So you're looking th from the back of your tree out to your viewers who are watching your show, we'll say. And this is the bottom right that's how it's set up and wired so uh, i always start at the bottom left it, it just makes sense and you 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 wire from from the front you wire from left to right but if you're looking at this view this just shows you the pixel order that you that you have uh that you can verify that you've uh, built it the way that you've told x lights that you are actually physically setting it up as um so you have the same kind of options now I'll, I'll i'll get rid of the 50 pixels and i'll get rid of the 16 strings i'm going to cut this in half and i'm going to say 25 or no um uh 24 we'll say 24 because i can cut that in half so if we had eight outputs that we were going to put this tree on and we had 24 pixels per output we can see that let's say we were going to let's call this a mini tree actually a, a very dense mini tree there's eight outputs and there's 24 pixels per output now i know you're probably not going to build it like this so just is just for demo purposes and so you can see the diagram um the stand uh, the strands per string can go uh let's let's divide that in half and let's put two pixels uh or two string uh two two wraps and up and a down on our mega tree and if we select it now this is i mean if you only have 12 pixels tall that's at two inch spacing that's 24 inches tall so you know you're not building this big uh big mega tree you're building a mini tree but it gives us a way to look at the wiring view so that you can get kind of more accustomed to what uh what you're going to be looking at so again because because the curvature of the tree you can see how this is kind of curved where you can't really read the numbers if maybe if i stretch it out more there we go um so here you can see here is um did we put that at the top that looks a little weird uh oh i did start location is the top left let's make that bottom bottom left there we go that's why it was looking kind of weird okay so i stretch it out like this 
you'll see that you can you can pick out the there is string number one pixel number 24 string number one pixel number one two three four five six all the way up to 12 and then it comes across at the top and comes back down 13 to 24 now here's output number two and again keep in mind that maybe we're talking about small numbers but if you are you're trying to build your mega tree this is a simple way that you can do this uh, to f visually see this is how it's going to work for you and you can see uh, like string number two goes one through up here to uh, seven eight nine ten eleven twelve here at the top two twelve and then it connects this one here and then it comes back down you have output number three one through 12 and then tw uh, 13 back down to 24 and that's the third output or the third string we'll say and you do follow that exact map across the whole back side of the mega tree again we're looking at the reverse view we're always looking at the reverse view when we're looking at the wiring diagram so keep that in mind um, but this is what makes it nice is because if you have this mega tree and you want to see what it looks like before you build it this is how you can come in and start working on your configuration uh, so the next thing I want to show you is the don't zigzag so again um, and I'm, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this from round to flat and hopefully this will come out a little bit a little bit more clear when we go to the wiring view if if whereas before and it did that's good whereas before we were going all the way up crossing over at the top and coming back down this shows an extra line that that yellow line there maybe I maybe I can stretch it out a little more and you can see it uh, annotate here we go so you can see pixel number one here string five pixel number one and you can see this line that goes straight down here what that means is it's a jumper line it's jumping from the top down to the bottom if you had already built your tree like this in the past x lights will allow you to do that in the future we don't recommend doing this because it just doesn't make sense this again this was built for helping people who already built their tree like this and they didn't have to tear it apart unpush the pixels and re-push re the pixels so um so there is that and then i want to show you again uh, we'll, we'll do it with uh, we'll do it with less strings we'll do it with four strings and we will disable the zigzag or don't zigzag and we'll change it to alternate nodes now uh, I am going to give a huge shout out to one of our uh, PPD club members uh, Angie Harrison uh, who started with the hobby I want to say in 2019 she is a fantastic beautiful woman who has done an amazing job putting her show together and in 2019 her first year she built her mega tree following some instructions from somebody who is trying to help her and she physically pushed the pixels every other pixel from the bottom of the tree up to the top of the tree now you have to understand that Rob who does uh, a number of the layout uh, settings uh, setups for uh, our PPD clients um, he built the mega tree for her and built her a custom model so that uh, she could sequence on it and then she was really looking for a way to make the tree actually look like the tree so rob took the time and used individual strings to do this leapfrog type thing and more recently uh what what has been added into x lights is you can now do this with that leapfrog you can go here's pixel number one two three four five six you get all the way up to seven and you come back down to eight nine ten eleven and twelve and since we are using two strings per strand and this is how she built her her tree it comes over to here and then it leapfrogs up and keeps leapfrogging up and then it gets to the top and then it pops right back down so for that use case it was incredibly helpful because I we we, we did talk to to one of the developers at, at one time about adding it and uh, there really didn't seem to be a need for it until down the road when a number of other people had built their trees the same way uh, and it made it really hard to uh, use X lights to sequence with the custom model and see the actual kind of visual results that was a really nice um, that was a really nice addition so uh, th this is definitely one of the neat things 
uh, about the tree model. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with as far as the tree model is concerned is, uh, and I'm going to change this back to um, round, and there's a reason for this. There's actually two things I want to show you. Um, Xlights has some some interesting things that are built into it as far as 3D goes. Now uh, we already we already showed you that if you look at this, we'll unselect it. If we look at this, you can tell that this is a uh, semicircle of of pixels. So uh, what a lot of people might like to do when they're building their X lights layout is they might like to have a tunnel and one of the ways that they've built tunnels in the past is they've just made a bunch of arches they've done here's an arch and then they copy this arch and they paste it and they paste it and they paste it and they say oh look there's my tunnel well that really isn't very efficient and one of the things that uh the developers did was they gave us this um the option to use the mega tree model as a uh, tunnel model, and so I'm going to walk you kind of through that. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, we have we have a couple settings that I skipped over at the beginning, and the top of it here, it's, or at the very top here, it says we have degrees, which is 180. Uh, we have rotation. We're going to leave that alone. Uh, we'll go down to bottom and top ratio. If we change this to zero, look what happens. It turns it into. And it's hard to see it whenever you're in 2D. It turns it into a semicircle. And if we go like this, you can see, oh, look at that. It looks just like a tunnel. In, and you could like kind of drive right through that. Or you could park your car in your driveway and have this tunnel kind of look. So um, let's go ahead and fill this in. Let's give this... Um, but, but, the, but, the, but the challenge, the challenge with, with many people have was each arch over top of their driveway they would put the string from the left side to the right side and this is where the developers really helped out a whole lot they changed the strand direction from vertical which was fixed to to have the ability to add horizontal in so whenever you did this and let's say let's let's get rid of these extra numbers here um let's say we had 16 let's say we had 16 uh uh, hoops that go over your driveway and so if we if we kind of stretch this out let me get let me get off of 3d for a second if we stretch this taller and then let's say you have for each hoop you put like 150 pixels on each hoop that's kind of what you would expect to put over top of your driveway especially especially that's I, I know we put like in some instances it's 80 or 100 uh, you might want high density so you put 150 on there that's one way to think about this now think about the wiring view if we select this and we right click and we look at wiring view um, now I know I, I kind of bumped it up but just know uh, whoops let me stretch it out real big here just know that you can see that the density left to right is much more filled in. So you can't see the numbers. But what you can tell is that you clearly have 16 hoops that go over top of the entire driveway. So that's what's nice about the, um, the, the Megatree model is because now you can literally use this as a uh, you could put your, you could put basically um, just just to kind of give you a couple ideas. You could put your controller on this side. You could start it from this side here, the left. So if it's the bottom left and it starts here, now that you now you can just run your here's one uh, one string per output or whatever. However you're going to plan on doing it, this is your simple way to kind of build your 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 tunnel for your garage, um, but then let's go in and do kind of the the thing in x lights where we do it with 3d uh in order to change the direction that this is going to sit you have to click the center here and then you get to these these twirl uh kind of icons and you would want to change it this way and now you'd be looking at it as if you were in 3D. You could look at it in that manner and see it as that. You could also come in here. Uh, you can move it left and right. That's not what I want to show you. I want to show you this. You could change how wide it is uh, and how tall it is. Oop, there we go. That's the, that's the height. 
so that could be your your little your little tunnel that if you have to absolutely have to see it in in 3d this is a fun way to do that so um the last thing i want to share with you and that's in 2d you can see what it looks like in 2d the last thing i want to share with you uh whenever it comes to the matrix and the mega tree model specifically the mega tree model is there is something called a spiral tree and i believe that um uh, I believe that uh, that um, Matos Design sells a spiral tree as well as a tree, uh, well, as well as Gilbert. I think they have a Coro version, or maybe it's, I, I forgive me, I don't remember. It could be uh, Jackie or it could be uh, James. But uh, they have a spiral tree, and you can use the X-Lights Mega Tree model to build your spiral tree. And it's very, very easy. So I'll show you how to do this real quick. What you have to do is, because it's a spiral tree, a spiral tree generally has a start point at the bottom and it spirals upwards. You can also use this model to wrap pixels around your bush that's out in front of your house. I could have done that this year myself. And with that in mind, I'm only using literally one string. And what does one string look like? Well, it doesn't look too exciting for a mega tree. But if we come over here to spiral wraps and we say, how many times did you wrap it around the tree? Your, your, uh, um, I don't know. How many times did you wrap it around the spiral tree? Maybe it has five. We can put five in there. And now let's, let's beef it up so you can see. Let's say there's 150 pixels in the whole thing total. Now you have this perfect little spiral tree. And we actually use this in the pro layout. This is how we build the model. Um, but that's one of the nice things. Now, if you have a bush, that bush could also be set up with, uh, like we did with the uh, with the tunnel matrix. We could change the um, the uh, what was it? The top to bottom ratio. I think if we make this zero, well, there is a, a way that you could wrap your bush and still have the pixels in there and build it the same way that the model is built in X lights. And all you'd have to do is come in here. How many pixels are on the whole strand? Oh, I have 200 pixels. Okay, great. How many times did you wrap it around the bush? Uh, you can, you can also designate that. You could say, oh, I only did it four times. Okay. Or maybe it's three times. Three times looks a little better. Okay. And it gives you a good approximate. So when you're running your effects on it, it actually does something and it looks rather reasonable that's already uh that you've already got in your show or you, you've got available to you and here's a simple way just to add it into x lights so um i have uh gone through a significant number of things here and i have just gone non-stop for about 40 minutes so i'm going to jump over to chat and have a look and see what chat says um let's see Um, how do we calculate power requirements for such a matrix using the export from X lights? Um, so the, you actually want to calculate, if you're going to calculate your, your power usage, the first thing that you're going to do for power usage is you're going to consider how big it's, you plan to make it. And, um, I, I kind of talked about the power a little bit in the middle of there, Dale. Um, specifically, like uh, uh, I, we don't recommend on any power supply. If generally we use 350 watt Meanwell power supplies or the generic 350 watt power supplies, either is going to work for you. Um, but uh, we generally don't use more than 1600 pixels. I know there's a, there's a bunch of people that are chomping at the bits to tell you you can run more, but um, we, we generally don't run more than 200 pixels on an output. You can, um, but we also run them at 30% uh, brightness. That's how you can get 16 strings of 200 pixels off of uh, one power supply. And then we divide that equally 200 pixels per eight outputs. Um, and then if you have two power supplies on a on a 16 output controller that that gives you 3200 pixels and that's kind of the best way that we we just build our i usually build my props to be 200 pixels per output or a power balance between the outputs the total stuff that i have connected into everything to see if i can put 250 on one output which you can 
and uh, you may have to uh, you may have to do some power injection. I haven't done that, but there's there there are there are uh, limits to what the con uh, the power supply can do. So that's I, I build to about sixteen hundred pixels on a power supply. That's kind of where my brain stops and says, okay, that's enough. Next controller, this is going to have to go out and more more controllers. So uh, good question. Um, and I see somebody also answered it, but they also went through the long form of figuring and calculating. So good on you guys. Thank you. Um, another question about the alternate pixels. I was thinking uh, in using alternate, but wanted to have like pixel number one equal pixel one colon one and pixel number two equal col two colon one, etc. So one string will fail not a part of the matrix will fail but only a part will have half a resolution is that possible so um, the answer is yes you're really making it very hard I would not recommend doing that and um, I would if I were in your situation I would refer back to the answer that I just gave uh, to uh, Dale, whenever it comes to building your matrix, um, plan for only so many pixels per output. Uh, the controllers today can do a lot of pixels per output. That doesn't mean just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Uh, because if you, the more pixels you have on an output and you have a failure on an output, yes, you do lose a section of your uh, of your prop. Uh, or a section of your show, but generally it's only one piece of it. So the more pixels you have on an output, the more that it's going to affect it. Generally, I would not worry about that. I would I, I would build it exactly like we've shown here. I wouldn't try to, because you would physically have to build a custom model and you'd have to interweave pixel number, string number two, you'd physically have to put uh, let's say you have 50 on one string and 50 on this string you'd have to do pixel number one pixel number 51 pixel number two pixel number 52 because string one and string two is it now it becomes on a custom model it's one through the total number of pixels it doesn't go by strands so i would avoid that i would definitely avoid that you're making you'll you'll make it way harder than you need to um Kenny says, I assume you would need to, uh, to alternate pixels for a uh, continuous strand of icicles like you have in the pro layout. Um, yeah, so basically, the I guess the icicle model does kind of fit in here with this uh, demonstration. I hadn't considered that because I've already done something on this, but if you opened up the icicle model and uh, if you were building, and I'm, I'm going to use the Boscoyo model, which is the Icicles 100 model. Um, what what the Icicle 100 model is, it's 100 pixels, uh, not 800, but you it's 100 pixels, and it is 8 pixels, and then a, a 8, a, yeah, 8 pixels, and then one and then one and then it goes back to eight and that's the repetition and this is what it looks like so if you had and in my instance what i had was across the front of my house i had uh, 1100 pixels and i did that as well but i did just like you said i did that alternate i need i did that alternate nodes you click that alternate nodes and if you go in and you look at the wiring view and that's why you go with the smaller one. Uh, we'll go with 100. That way I can see the wiring view and show you. So you can see here node node 1, string 1, node uh, node 2, string 1, node, node 3, string 1, node 4, string 1. And then you get to the bottom and then you bounce back up. You do that leapfrog, get to 8, and here's 9 and 10 and you have 11 and then you go down and leapfrog down leapfrog back up so it's it's the same case as that so tim says he still uses the ribbon tree uh model good for you uh you're retiring that tree this year though oh that's a shame i think they're special they're, they're not something that people bring into the hobby anymore um Uh, Michael Lewis says, uh, one ribbon tree, 16 strips, two node trees, 16 strings of 100 running as 
a two strand and one node tree is 32 strings uh, I assume oh, 100 nodes each yeah so you, uh, have you seen the mobile tree by Jerry Jewell uh, horizontal hoops I have so uh, horizontal hoops what you would have to do is you would have to build a custom model in order for that to work um, and you would really need to focus on the distance between each of those pixels in order to have uh, in order to have the uh, the, the spacing required so that the uh, effects accurately represent um, the locations just because as you get to the closer to the top there they are closer together there's less pixels in the top than there are on the bottom it's not like a normal mega tree where we think of strips that go from the bottom to the top so yeah that would be a custom model it's not hard but I mean it's um, it's something that uh, it's something that you can definitely consider um, Mark Mark says, "Will you discuss if you want to do a matrix on an HD television?" So, um, I that that falls into a different category. That falls into the category of a virtual matrix, and that's run by either a Raspberry Pi or maybe a BeagleBone. I'm not sure if they uh, if there's a HDMI output on it, but you would use uh, FPP. And yes, you would have to set it up in here. I personally haven't done one of them, but that is something. Um, that's something that we could consider doing sometime down the road. That's uh, not a bad idea. Uh, I m might put Rob to the task on doing that one because he's a little more familiar with the FPP. But it's something that it's something that uh, I I would consider doing in the future. So if you uh, uh, are out there on YouTube, uh, forgive me because I don't have YouTube set up. Um, it, but in any event, um, that's all I have for you guys. If you have any more questions, throw them in chat. We're going to move on to the second section tonight, which is our PPD uh, uh, open mic night, where if you guys have questions, you're welcome to ask them. We don't record this session because, well, people don't like to ask questions whenever the cameras are rolling sometimes. So um, uh, that's everything I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If you uh, are watching this, the recording on YouTube or on Facebook, hopefully hit the like button, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't done so, uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, remember to hit the bell for notifications. We always are putting out videos, uh, new songs come out, new um, new trailers come out, new, new advertisements. Uh, that, well, we have some cool advertisements that you can guys can put in your shows uh, coming out pretty soon. You're gonna, really going to like those. And then we have some in song introductions and, and different joke packs and stuff. So um, always hit the bell for notifications. And if you appreciate the things we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club. You get one awesome sequence each and every month. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you in the next video, and we'll see you next time. Take care, and bye for now.